In times like these, we need faith that's victorious, and you can walk in it. Welcome to Victorious Faith with Pastor Mark Cowart. Hello and welcome to the broadcast. It is good to be with you today. We're in a new series on mind renewal. Quite honestly, this is one of the most um, powerful studies. I believe one of the most important, especially when we look at Romans chapter 12, verses one and two, your destiny, fulfilling your destiny is actually tied to the renewing of your mind to the word of God. And you were going to discover some things that uh, I think are, are really uh, pertinent to where you're at right now. And the way out is getting your mind renewed to the Word of God. So our free offer is the study guide, and you can download that right now, and I encourage you to do it. You should be taking notes. I'm not telling you what to do, but I encourage you to take notes because when you get something from the Lord, it can be so alive. You think, well, I'll have this. This is not going anywhere. But what I find is when I take notes, get busy doing other things, I come back around and then I go, wow, I totally forgot about that. And the note, I'll say something like, now that is powerful. And it was actually a thought, a concept or an idea that came from the Holy Spirit. But uh, I remember one time I was at a conference years ago and the gentleman that was teaching said, your life is always going to follow your most dominant thoughts. I mean, what's the difference between people that succeed and people that fail? People that overcome or people that are defeated. It really is the thought life. It's not your resources that you have available because I've seen people with a lot of resources and they still failed. I've seen other people with no resources and I've been one of those with no resources. I joke about it, but it, it was definitely true. When Linda and I started in the ministry, we were so poor, we could not pay attention. There was no actual way to make it in the natural, but we had a resilience, we had a faith in God, and we just refused to quit. And so I encourage you to download that study guide and use that to take notes along the way. And then uh, we're going we're gonna to go into the broadcast here, but there's a couple things I want to highlight. We um, reference the brain-mind distinction. Your brain and your mind are different things. Your brain is like the computer, like this iPad I've got. It's got an operating system or a software in it. So your brain is like this hardware here. And the, the, the real key to this working effectively is the right software. And if the software's got a bug in it or a virus, and of course, as technology improves, it gets better and better. But I remember in the early days of computers where they just had viruses or software bugs or things, and it would throw the whole system off. And here's the thing you need to be encouraged on. Your brain, unless there's been some kind of damage or something like that, works perfectly. It's what you put in it. The software are the thoughts you choose to think on, retain, and entertain. And just that alone, that will change your course, your destiny. And so uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead. We're going to join the service in progress from here at Church for All Nations. And I'll be back at the end of the broadcast to pray with you and uh, give you some concluding thoughts. Let's go ahead and join that service now. So the first thing is he takes is he obsesses. Then it goes to oppression. And for an unbeliever, it goes to possession. That's when the enemy destroys a person, takes them down. Now, have you read the headlines even this morning? You can't make this stuff up. Right here in Colorado, a man killing his own wife and children. And you read that, and you read these stories. You read these hideous things that go on, one human on another human. 
And you go, how do they do it? It started with an obsession. It started with the pounding on the mind. They, they found somebody else they wanted instead of their current spouse. Or they got a root of bitterness on the inside of them. And, and it just constantly, and it was a pounding and a pounding. And obsession went to oppression because when you fail to resist the devil, he knows it. And then what happens, you have to understand, thoughts are not alone. Spiritual forces are behind them. For instance, the spirit of suicide. It is counterintuitive for a person to want to take their own life because one of the strongest forces in a human being is self-preservation. And, and if you don't think, through, think so, think of it. If somebody falls into water and they begin to drown, they don't just sit there and go, I think I'll drown. And they, they, without even thinking about it, they're fighting, trying to fight for their lives. Many people that have attempted suicide survived. Just read a story about it the other day. Horribly disfigured young lady. And they showed the before and after. She was this beautiful young lady. And this world, do you know how this world disciples our sons and daughters in this nation of what pretty is and what acceptable is? And it's insanity. It's craziness. And this beautiful young lady was obsessed that she wasn't good enough, she didn't measure up, and she attempted to shoot herself, and it horribly disfigured. And now the wake-up call, and she wants to live, and she wants to tell other people about it. But how does somebody go and cross those things that are so deeply ingrained in us? Obsession that goes to oppression. And it's like a wet blanket on you, discouraged. You don't want to keep going on. You don't want to keep trying to break through. And it's all back to the mind and then the possession. So, so the bottom line of it is, we read right here in Romans 12 too, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What's he saying here? Your mind is the gateway to your life. If you change your thoughts, you change your life. But here's what you have to do. You have to crush and destroy those lingering thoughts. Something that seems to imply you're not going to break through. You're never going to get married. You're never going to succeed. You have, you, you have to answer those things. Don't let those things go unanswered. And there's several ways. Number one, be careful who you hang around. He that walketh with the wise shall be wise. A companion of fools will be destroyed. Businessmen, get around some businessmen that have been through hard times and made it out. The last thing you want to do is get around people that went through hard times and stayed there. Because there's a way out. There is a way out of your situation right now. And the enemy's trying to blind you to it. And that's why the Word of God is so important. It's the greatest success manual that's ever been created, ever written, because it is the Word of God. And most people don't know any success motivation speakers, success motivation gurus, whatever you want to call them, anything they're using that's working comes from the Word of God. They're doing better with the Word than most believers are. So... There's a book I want to let you know about. It's a challenging book, but it's called As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. And you can probably get it free, download it free. It's public domain. James Allen's an interesting guy. There's not a lot of information. He's a British man. And it's a powerful book. And I mean, it's not a book you can just read and put it away. You'll spend the rest of your life chewing on nuggets out of it. But it's based off Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinketh in his heart... So is he. Now think of both sides of the equation. You are not a failure. Because you're created in the image of God, God doesn't create failures. You may be failing right now, but you are not a failure. You and I, all of us, are operating at a 100% success rate right now. Somebody says, but I'm not where I want to be. I'm not succeeding the way I want to succeed. But we are operating at a 100% success rate. And here's my first point. That is because you need to understand the mind-brain connection. The mind-brain distinction. Okay? 
Your brain is different than your mind. Your brain is the hardware. It's the computer. Your brain is that little three-pound thing of flesh where we are marvelously, wonderfully created, fearfully and wonderfully made. Right now, your eyes are blinking. Think how many hundreds, thousands of times your eyes blink in a day. None of you had to think once consciously to blink your eyes because your eyes were needing moisture. Your brain takes care of all that. Your breathing, your hunger pains, your bodily functions, your thirst. It keeps you alive. Your brain is a blessing. Your brain is awesome. And the reason I bring the distinction that your mind is not your brain, your brain is not your mind, because your brain works perfectly for most people. Some have questioned mind, but for most people, the brain works perfectly because you're alive. The brain, you have reflexes that save your life. Okay? So that brain's going to process the information you put in. The brain's the computer. It's the hardware, but your mind is the software, Amen. okay? Now, I don't know about you. Do you get these upgrades on your phone? Oh, upgrade available, and then they bug you every day. Time to, you need to do your upgrade. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it the next day. I'll do it. So you get all these, and I'll look at them, and what it does, it says, this fixes the <laughs> bug, certain bugs, like this fix is crashing. Like I've had programs I downloaded. All of a sudden I'd be sitting there and think, poop, shut down. They had a bug in there. I didn't throw my phone away because a program crashed. I did a software upgrade. Okay. Now many of you just need to think everybody has experienced a degree of success. You are successful. You are capable. But what got you here won't get you where you need to go. Life is a continuum. We don't ever get to any place and just park and say, I'm done. That's why people die early. You should be busy until you depart this planet. There is no retirement in the kingdom of God. Different season, different workload. But your last season of life, I'm talking to you youngins between the ages of 60 and 90 right now, this ought to be your most productive years of your life. So all you need is what got you to where you're at today, and you need to stop and think. You're, some of you are doing really well. You've had some real great breakthroughs, but don't ever stop. God's a God of increase. Yes. Yes. And like I said, I'm after those things that God prepared for me that I don't know about yet. Aren't you? Think about that. The Bible says it has not entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared, provided, made, and keeps ready. Something in me goes, what you got for me, Lord? What do you got? Because you've had some things for us, Lord, that I go, whoo, Lord, that's awesome. I could have never thought that up. I could have never thought that. I could have never done that. But for every one of you, he said, the thoughts that God thinks toward every one of you are more than the sand. Not the sand of the sea. More than the sand. That means God has things prepared, provided, made, and keeps ready. And the way we get there is we begin to believe his word. So the first thing is, you see, your brain is the computer, like the hardware, but your mind is the software. Let me read from this book. Here's a quote from James Allen. He said, man's mind may be likened to a garden, which may be intelligently cultivated or allowed to run wild, but whether cultivated or neglected, it must and it will bring forth. Here's the thing. You know, when you go to bed at night, I used to think your brain just shuts down, you know. The brain goes, okay, we're asleep. Let's just all take a nap. And all the little brain cells, you know, they all go to bed. And, and then all of a sudden, you know, you stir. And then it's like, okay, time to wake up. No, not at all. Your brain keeps working through the night. This is what we've learned, post-traumatic stress disorder. What happens is when the brain is exposed and, and our combat soldiers are exposed to things that we ought to not have to witness as human beings atrocities. And when you go to bed, that's like uh, Charlie Warren that does reboot for combat vets that are processing through things that have happened that, you know, 
they're on the battlefield seeing things and 72 hours later they're in front of their families and it's like we're just supposed to tell them to turn the switch off and you're no longer on the battlefield and be a family man now. And it's destroyed so many. The suicide rate among our combat vets is horrible. And why is that? Because the brain processes that. And, you know, guys don't talk about it a lot. The combat vets that I know, the post-traumatic stress disorder. And by the way, you do not have to go to the, you know, you don't have to go to war to have PTSD. Your childhood could have traumatized you, abuse of all sorts. It can traumatize a person. And your brain, it's overload. It's like trying to put 220 volts in a little device like that. It fries circuits. And then they can't process, don't know how to process. So when you go to bed at night, what you've put in your mind or what's allowed to be in your mind, good or bad, keeps working, keeps working, keeps working. And it's like a garden. How many of you know gardens don't keep themselves free of weeds? The gardener has to do that. You and I have to tend to the garden of our mind. If we don't, useless weed seeds get in there. James Allen goes on, he says, it also reveals within himself, man also reveals within himself the laws of thought and understands with ever increasing accuracy how the thought forces and mind elements operate in the shaping of his character, circumstances, and destiny. You should write those three words down. Your thoughts do affect your character, your circumstances, and your destiny. Your character, your thoughts affect your character, your circumstances, and your destiny. Let me give you how most of you realize, I mean, you're sensitive to this and may not realize it. So how many of you have ever come to someone you know and say, hey, how are you doing? And they go, hey, doing really good. And you've said, no, you aren't. What was it? What was it that you were feeling? Because the smile was pasted on. You sensed something. The thought forces that are allowed to park in us create, let me say it this way, a force field. You ever met people you'd rather avoid? Divine avoidance. You ever asked somebody how they're doing and regretted it? It's like, how you doing? Well, I'll tell you, I ain't doing real good. And then, you know, I need to be going. We'll see you a little later here. And then shh, shh, take a shower. Shh, shh, shh. What is it? I thought it was just, just thoughts. They're not that important, right? No, there's, it attracts things. If there's, like somebody said, if there's a lot of gar, if, there's a, if you're having a problem with mice or rats, make sure the garbage is not somewhere you're not aware of because garbage attracts that. Garbage in our life attracts the enemy, but we can put on garments of praise. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Make it difficult for the enemy to hang around you. You know, if I'm around somebody in the world and they just have a really vile mouth, I mean, you know, filthy, dirty, I don't like to be around that. Guess what? The devil doesn't like to be around you when you're constantly praising the Lord. It's cussing in reverse. <laughs> Hallelujah. Driving down. That's why the Lord, the, the word says, singing to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. The devil can't handle it when the word's flowing out. When you have joy. Listen, if the, going back to the Obsession, oppression, when your joy is stolen, your strength has been taken. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. So remember this, the mind-brain distinction. So there's nothing wrong with you. You are 100% successful. The only thing, you might need a software upgrade. You might have a little software bug you need fixing. The right idea, the right thought, implemented, held in your mind, will give you the key. You cannot come to God and say, God, what do I do in my life? This is wrong and that's wrong. You're never going to have the Lord say, I don't know. Oh, me, my. (laughs) 
You don't know the way. He is the way. The word is the way. There is a key right now to your situation. The Lord knows what lay in the dark. The Lord, keys. We operate in a kingdom that operates on keys. And the right key will open the door that you're at right now. Locked doors are not meant to keep you out, but keep the devil out. There is a key for your situation. Jesus said, I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. And one idea from God, one word from God can change your whole destiny. Open a whole new destiny up for you. And it all begins in the renewing of the mind. All right, we'll close on this. The next point, all the praying, hoping, wishing, fasting, etc., will never be adequate to overcome negative thinking. You simply need to change the negative thinking. If you change the negative thinking, you won't need to do as much praying. You won't need to do as much fasting because life is made to work. I was in a store this last week and I was down at Home Depot and I was using my credit card and, and, and I, I said, do I, do I need to sign it out? She goes, it's thinking right now. She, and then she said it and I was thinking it. Technology is wonderful when it works. <laughs> life is meant to work. God created it to. And if it's not, there's nothing wrong with you. It's not like you've done something wrong. What's happening is it's an indicator you need to change your thinking. Change your thinking, change your life. Here's a little challenge for us. If you don't like the way people are treating you, first place to check, how are you treating yourself? Because people generally treat you the way you treat yourself. Self-hatred, self-pity, and self-centeredness is what I call the satanic trinity. All on yourself, all about you. That's the devil. Because God says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I'll add all this other stuff to you. If you take the word sin, the middle letter is what? I. If you take the word pride, the middle letter is? That's what Satan did. He focused on himself, wasn't satisfied with what God had. So if you get self-centered, you'll typically go into self-pity, which creates self-hatred. And if you'll break any one of those out, you break the triangle, you'll break the enemy's back. Crush him under your feet. Focus upon the Lord and what he has done. That satanic trinity is nothing but an obsession that is the enemy's, but you resist the devil and he must flee. And if we go back to our scripture right now, listen, even Einstein said this. He said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. <laughs> That's why God said, hey, look, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So Let's take on God's thoughts. He's pretty successful, isn't he? And he put his thoughts in print. And so when you start to implement that, what you are really destined to do is get obsessed with God's thoughts. And if you do, look out. Blessings are on the way. Hallelujah. As they say, Katie, bar the door. It's a coming your way. If you'll just, all you have to do is take your thoughts from what's not happening, what you wish could happen, and get it over here to say, thank you, Lord. Put his thoughts, download that into you. You'll change your world. Romans 12, 2 says this, so that you may prove, demonstrate what is the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. And remember, it's a progression. You don't just end up at the very top. You begin a progression of good and acceptable and perfect. If you get one trickle of blessing, praise God for it. One little breakthrough, thank God for it. Just whatever praise that you think God deserves in your life, double it immediately and thank him. You get up this morning, you got a pulse, thank him. Just get excited about it. Because there will be a million people by the end of this coming week that will wake up and that will be their last day on this planet. So every day is a gift. 
I'm telling you, you will be uncontainable, unstoppable if you will focus on the Lord, his word. Quit chasing the red flags of the enemy. Just get obsessed with God. He's worthy to be obsessed with. He's the only thing you ought to be obsessed with. He is your life. He's your light. He's your everything. He alone deserves our attention. Hallelujah. Well, I hope that that ministered to you and blessed you. And I want to point out that these broadcast or the messages that you watched are available for purchase. And so that information's on the screen. And be sure to visit markcowart.org. Visit my website. There's a lot of great resources. As you look through there, there are going to be some things, I believe, that could minister to other areas of your life. And I just want to close with this thought. Take responsibility for what you allow in your mind. You know, it's a strange thing. It's the easiest and the most difficult thing you'll ever do, and that is to renew your mind. Mind renewal is so simple in process, but it's interesting how it can be such a challenge when it comes to the actual, it's actually labor to renew your mind, to focus. Anybody can think, but there's a vast difference between just thinking and directing your thoughts. And so uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 35, Jesus gave us a warning. He said, make sure that what you call light is not, in fact, really darkness. And why is that? Because Satan can transform himself as an angel of light. And he goes on to say that Apostle Paul actually said this to the church at Corinth. He said, it's no, it's no mystery. It's no wonder that Satan's ministers can transform themselves into ministers of light. So the Word of God is the absolute final authority on that. I want to pray before we close today over you. Father, I thank you for the listening audience. Thank you for their hunger for the Word of God. I pray, Lord, your Word sown into their heart today brings forth much fruit. I pray, Lord, for perseverance and resilience, Lord. And I pray for an unction, Holy Spirit, to guard their thought life, to be the watchman they need to be over the thoughts in their mind. And I pray for a quickening of your Holy Spirit in their lives over their thought life. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. I just remembered something Dr. Lester Summerall used to say frequently. If you feed your faith, you will starve your doubts to death. And I want to encourage you to do that. Take advantage of the free offer. Download the study guide. And then also, if you need prayer and you, you want further agreement, there's a number on your screen. We have people standing by right now. You can pick up the phone and they are ready to pray with you. I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow at this same time. Romans 12.2 tells us not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by renewing our minds to the Word of God. Discover how you can be transformed in the teaching Mind Renewal. We are offering a free study guide as our gift to you, and the video and audio series of Mind Renewal are both available for purchase on USB, DVD, CD, and MP3. Order this teaching today at markcowart.org or by calling 1-800-590-4764. We invite you to donate and partner with Mark Cowart Ministries. Visit our website, markcowart.org, and become a partner today.